good morning. <clears throat> and it is very appropriate to continue to say Merry Christmas. We actually just started the Christmas season liturgically, didn't we? And uh, you can celebrate Christmas now through January the 6th, next uh, Sunday, when Epiphany begins. So if there's any more presents to buy, you still have time. But uh, we're so glad that we can all be together on uh, this uh, beautiful last Sunday of 2018. Now, before we have our message today, uh, Billy wanted me to add one thing to his announcement about the Red Cross blood drive. There are instructions uh, in the, uh, out there on the Red Cross page, blood drive handout, that lets you know how to sign up. So if you need to know how to sign up, just read that carefully and you will be fine. Well, today's message, turn to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and um, I titled the message, Dwelling in the Shadows. Dwelling in the Shadows, and, and I think this is more of a year end, but getting ready for the new year type of message rather than Christmas tide message, just to give you a forewarning. And I wanted to share a little bit with you from my recent experiences um, going through what I've gone through, but maybe what you are facing and what many, all of us may face in the new year. Well, to begin with, um, I just wanted to share with you, you know what I really enjoyed about being in the hospital <clears throat> in ICU for three weeks? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. You know, it's, uh, I, would, I do not recommend a hospital stay. You know, you don't get any rest. You're up constantly all night. They tell you to get rest and sleep, but you just can't do it. Um, for one period there of at least a week and a half of my stay, while they decided this time to do it, I don't know why. Every morning at 3 to 3.30 a.m., they would come and take blood from both of my arms. That was fun, especially when they started not finding veins to find. And so it would take a good half hour to do that. But I think I had every test, um, every part of my body punctured just about. And so I know I've got a good physical for the year because if there was anything to find, they would have found it. But there is just no joy about being in the hospital for that long or any amount of time. But as I thought about that, there's really no joy in some of the experiences that you go through either, is there? Life is just full of experiences that are no fun. It's hard to find human joy in them. I imagine there, I know, I've been through that too, there's no joy in going through cancer, is there? No positive experiences. There's no joy in radiation treatment, chemotherapy treatment, waiting for test results, living with that. There's no joy in having heart problems, is there? There's no joy in, uh, in getting a new heart until it works, right, Brad? <clears throat> yeah. There's just no joy in that. It's hard to find that. There's, no, there's not much happiness or joy in going through the grief process. That's why it's the grief process. Maybe as we get to the other end of it, we can look back and see where God is with us, but there's no, it's not fun going through. There's no, it's not fun, there's no joy in going through depression or emotional difficulties or relationship problems or facing hard decisions or just going through any hardship at all. And But we know these things are a part of life, don't we? We know they happen. I know that some of you are going through some of these things right now. And we don't know what 2019 holds, so holds some mostly blessings, mostly joy, 
mostly thrilling times with family and friends and great memories, but we know that it can hold some difficult days as well, don't we? So we know that that can come. Well, I was, for some reason, as I thought about, uh, you know, when you're so drugged up in the hospital, you don't think too clearly. But thinking back, for some reason, um, I thought about part of the 91st Psalm when I was in some of my darkest hours. I couldn't remember it all, of course. But for some reason, that this psalm came back to me time and time again, more than any other parts of Scripture. And so I, I told myself, when I get out, I am going to get my head clear. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to find out why. Why was some of this passage is coming back? So let me pause this moment and read the 91st Psalm. Now, I am going to read it in the King James Version, which I don't do often. But I've always said the Psalms are poetry and the Psalms are is music that was written. And somehow, I just think the King James language, that 17th century language, just makes them sing a little better. So listen to this beautiful written psalm or song that was sung in worship. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. The word of the Lord today. Well, the 91st Psalm is a, is a psalm of praise. It's a psalm of, of God's people recognizing through faith that God walks with us in difficult times. It's a reminder that we do not walk this life, especially times of difficulty, alone. And the way that this psalm was used in ancient Israel in worship was kind of like we do at the beginning of our service. We didn't have it in our, in our slides today, but it really was used as a responsive reading, where the leader says something and the congregation responds, and then the leader says something or sings something at the end. 
And so if we look at it that way, and the message that God is saying through this psalm, it makes, uh, it just encourages us in our faith as we go forward with our life now and with our life going into a new year. So let's look at it in that way. The first two verses would be the leader of worship, the priest or whoever's in charge that day, starting out and singing or saying the first part of the worship time. He would say in that, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. He would, would start off with this affirmation that if we all the time of our life are, and for us our Christian life, if we stay close to the Lord, if we dwell in the word of the Lord, if we live in his word, if we live close to him through prayer, if we look for the times when we can trust him, if we look for the times when God comes into our life or he recognizes presence in our life and he gets us through difficult times, if we dwell, if we dwell in that secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of our great God, then we will recognize and we're more quickly to recognize that he is there and can be our refuge and our strength when trouble comes. Because I can tell you, when trouble comes in the midst of hardship, in the midst of grief, in the midst of illness, in the midst of, of praying for a relative, when human factors, medical factors, psychological factors, such as shock and anxiety and confusion and wondering and speculating, when they all come in, it's awful hard to remember sometimes our faith and that God is there. It's there. It's in our heart. It's in our mind. But the more work, spiritual work, we have put in before those hard times come, the quicker his presence is going to rise in difficult days. I'll admit that every moment of every day, I was not praying and thinking of God in that hospital room. There were times of wondering, of uh, suffering, of wondering how in the world am I going to stay here three weeks when I'm used to getting out walking and doing and being. I'm not a sitter or a lay arounder. Don't ask Tammy. I nap in my chair pretty good. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was some hard times when sometimes I'll admit I had to consciously work at drawing up and reminding myself that the presence of the Almighty was there. It's hard spiritual work sometimes, isn't it? And it's hard. I never got to the place where I blamed God. Also, this, this un, uh, unexplained sense of not worrying of just taking moment by moment, knowing I had to get through this experience, came over me as well. And to me, that was the presence of God, God speaking, God trying to get through my doubt, God trying to get through this uh, uneasy experience I was going through. But I realized that God, Almighty God, is powerful enough to get through it and for us to recognize his presence. And that's really what, after the leader says this introduction, the congregational part of 
the responsive reading is rather long. It's verses 3 through 13. They respond. They say uh, some wonderful things in this congregational response. But basically the reason for it is the people of God, like us gathered here, is that they are giving a, a confession of their faith, a, a confession of their belief that God, they believe God has the power to deliver. That God has the power to make things okay. That God has the power even in our earthly mind in what we're told uh, as each other as human beings that, and we know, and we'll say this in the end, what Christ brings into this, but even that sometimes God's ultimate healing is not what we think it is, but we still have victory in God. God's faith, our faith in God can still be there. That there's even life after this earthly life. There's a resurrection. There's a heaven. There's a place where we can gather again, and God will make everything right, even death. And that's the response of the congregation. And so they list things that they're going to have faith in God in, that they're going to have confidence in God to deliver them. God is going to deliver them. Now, King James Version says pestilence, disease, health problems, aches and pains, aging however you want to put it, whatever you're going through or have been through, God's presence is there with you, and God can deliver you in his own power and his own might. They respond and say, God is going to be with us. He's going to overcome. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night. In other words, we don't have to fear the unknown the unexpected, the things in life that come upon us suddenly, the things in life that, that one day everything's going fine and then everything can come crashing down, can it? In a day, a few days, a week, maybe in a moment's notice. Some things, some of us fear the terror of night. What can happen? But God could walk with us through that. It said God can deliver us from the day. What we know is coming. What we can see in the light. We have dates circled on our calendar of things we're preparing for, don't we? Maybe it's a doctor's visit. Uh, maybe it's a, uh, uh, somebody coming to see us. Maybe it's a tough meeting we've got to, <clears throat> we have to prepare for. Well, whatever, there are things in the day, there's things that we know are going to come, and I know in my case that worrying about those are usually far greater than the actual event. <clears throat> and the people are responding, give those things to God. Know that God can handle those. Don't fear those. Don't waste those things away. Don't waste that time away. Jesus will say, let not your hearts be troubled. Or he'll talk in the Sermon on the Mount, a whole lengthy section about not being anxious for the little things. Remember, he says, God takes care of the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. If he takes care of those things, only take care of you. The psalm is saying something very similar. And then I love, and, and I think this is one of the things that I kept coming back to in those dark times in my hospital bed. I go back up to the fourth verse. And one of the things I kept thinking about, I remember this from this psalm, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
I thought about that, that, that um, even in our darkest hour, especially when we get into our darkest hour, and I know, I know it happened in my darkest hour, that I had to rely on the promise of God that he was there, and not only was he there, but he would literally, in our language, like a giant eagle with great wingspan, cover me with his wings. Cover me with his wings. Protect me. Give me comfort. Bring me in like a, a little eaglet into his nest where no harm could overcome me. Not many things are going to take out an eagle that high up, right? But then I also thought about, boy, these were in dark times. These were in times where there wasn't a lot of light. And then God covered me with his wings, and even though it's comforting, and even though it was warm, and even though I was in a very safe place, when he covered me with his wings, it made it appear even a little darker. <clears throat> That's got to be even a little darker under the wings of an eagle. At that moment, it may have felt a little worse <laughs> where I thought. It may have seen that, that it may have been a little harder for the light to penetrate, but yet it really wasn't because God was there all the time and even a closer presence than I could even imagine. I was underneath his wings. And as I got better and began to see the light at the end of the tunnel, maybe figuratively that was God kind of flapping his wing every now and then <laughs> and letting me see that what his care was doing, where I was heading. And maybe in your life, whatever you're going through or whatever you're going to face this year, maybe you're under the shadow of God's wing right now. And you say, it sounds good, but it's pretty dark what I'm dealing with. But no, even in the darkest time, that may be God's care and love and compassion just covering you. And he'll open up those wings and fly, and eventually he's going to kick you out of the nest and you're going to fly again and you're going to see the light. And you're going to look back and say, oh, yeah, <laughs> that was God. That was God helping me get through this, God healing me, God delivering me as the congregation way back when in David's day is singing about. And the song we need to be singing, right? We have confidence in our Lord God to deliver us from anything that can happen. And then as this psalm, psalm begins to wind down, the leader of worship speaks again. And maybe this is like a short homily, a short sermon, a, a recap of what is really being said here. And that begins in verse 14. When the psalmist sings, because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Theological interpretation, we give our love to God, we give our life to God, we confess our sin to God, and we love God and God loves us. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Is God speaking these final words? Verse uh, 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God cares for us. God listens when we cry out to him. And God will respond to our prayer with his eternal, perfect love. That's what the final word is in this time of worship. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God gives us salvation. God gives us even more than we pray for. He gives us eternal life. 
Now, as we, we wind up looking at this psalm, and the way I look at all scripture now is that we can look at it, like I say, from the other side. We can look at it as Christians. We can look at it seeing Jesus Christ and the promise of Jesus Christ in all that's written, Old Testament, New Testament. And as we look at this psalm as believers, we can see Jesus and his promise to us, his eternal promise to us, all through it, can't we? We can see salvation and the promise of salvation in this psalm. That God pursues us with his love. That God wants to deliver us from all that can destroy us in this world. And all, more importantly, that can destroy us in the spiritual. He can deliver us from our sin. He can deliver us from the evil one. He can deliver us from all that can really destroy us. Jesus says, don't worry about uh, those on earth that can destroy you. Worry about who can take your soul. As believers in Christ, we can look at this psalm and we can see God's care in it. That that God is there fighting for us, giving us his presence, going with us through life, good or bad or indifferent. And maybe the way that Paul said it was in that great verse in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, that many of us know by memory, is that the psalm might seem, if God is for us, who can be against us? Maybe that's the meaning of the 91st psalm as we look at it in Jesus' eyes. If God is for us, who can be against us? And what a great thought, what a great promise this entire psalm and Romans 8.31 to take us into a new year, into 2019, is that live your life with joy. Live your life knowing you're under the shadow of the Almighty God who saved you. Live your life knowing that if God is for you this coming year, who can be against you? What can befall you that he can't take care of in this life, or especially in the eternal life to come. God is our refuge and our strength, isn't he? Let us be like that ancient congregation. Let's leave here with our faith saying, we believe that God can go with us and take care of us in all that befalls us. And I think our year will be joyous no matter what life brings. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for your great promise, your great word to us. In this psalm that was written hundreds of years before your son was born, but we see Jesus all through it, as was your plan. So protect us. Deliver us from the evil and the evil one and let us know of your presence in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray.